guys, Valerie, am I on? Hold on, let me see. Hello out there in uh, Cyberland or whatever it is. Um, I'm glad you could join me today and I'm going to paint, or we're going to do the drawing of the hot air balloon. Am I, am I on? I've got uh, Ruby on remote <laughs> cast. Okay, I guess we're doing, I guess we're good. Um, so while everybody gets ready, hopefully you were able to find some colors because obviously this is all about the colors. But if you don't, and you don't have any colors and you just have a pencil, you just join right along and, um, and it'll be super fun anyway. Um, so I'm going to do one with the pastels and then I'm going to also do one with charcoal because the pencil doesn't really show up all that well. You need... I'm going to have to turn this down. Hang on. Okay. All right. Um, I think we can just get started. I'm going to sketch things out in my color piece with a light blue. Okay. Um, you have to pick something that's light that's, say it gets, especially too, if you were painting or something, you want to pick a color that we're going to outline this um, balloon. So you want to pick a color that if it gets picked up by the red or the purple or the blue or the yellow later, that it won't get all muddy looking. And the light blue will work pretty well with everything. If it gets with the yellow, um, you know, it would turn a little greenish, but it would just be at the edges and, and that's not really going to be a big deal. I don't think we're going to have any problem with that. But if you, if what you're, especially if you have crayons, if you have really soft pastels, um, and keep a little rag handy too, because it's nice to take that with your lighter colors and just kind of clean them up. Okay. So we want to get a pretty decent sized, um, balloon so that you can, um, you know, be able to color in all these different colors. And that, that's, you know, really the fun part and be thinking we're going to leave coloring in the balloon to the last bit. So you can be thinking during that time, what colors you want to use or what kind of a design you might like to use or anything like that, because we'll do that. We'll get the the, um, you know, not so, not so much fun parts done first, and then we'll save that good part for last. So we want to get the balloon right up to the very top. And the idea is to get it symmetrical, meaning that it's even on both sides. Um, if it turns out being sideways, it'll just have kind of the feeling that it's in a lot of wind and, and it will have a little bit more, um, tension and excitement going on in the picture. So if yours is lopsided don't worry about it but I'm gonna start this is kind of a flat line okay so I'm gonna start near the top not too close to the left side because you'll run out of room but maybe not smack in the middle so I'm gonna start with a line right here and then it's wider the widest closer to the top so over around here I'm gonna put a spot about here and a spot about here okay and that's going to be I'm going to make that into kind of a rainbow. All right. Not that you can't make your balloon in just a round circle, but, um, if you want to have this shape a little bit, that'll help. And I always find that if you're working on something symmetrical, do a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here, go work on both sides. Don't try to do the whole thing in one big loop because I mean, who can do that? You know, not me anyway. All right. We're going to find the spot for about right here. Okay, so that's gonna, we're gonna go to the middle and drop down, you know, a ways, okay? And make us a, a little line right about there. And then what you're doing is you're working in towards that mouth of the balloon, okay? So you're sort of sketching in like this and sketching in like this, okay? There, all right, so I'm gonna do that with the charcoal if you didn't catch it that time. So you're gonna start with the line on the top you're going to find a spot on either side like that. And then you're going to drop down here. Okay. And bring that in. Okay. Hopefully you have a pretty good amount of paper left down here because it would be nice to not have the basket overlap your mountain. Okay. If you are pretty low, just, plan on making your horizon line a little bit lower and you'll have a little less foreground. Okay. How are we doing Ruby? How are we doing Ruby? Good. Oh, she can't hear me. Well, that's not doing me any good. Are we good? Okay. Hang on. I think I'm getting feedback on. Okay. All right. Let's carry on. 
The next thing, so like I said, we're going to leave this to color. I know it's, you know, hard to leave it, but we'll leave this for now. What I want to do next is um, we're going to have a, the area of the blue sky. Luckily, you have a huge cloud. So you don't have to color that part of the picture in because we're going to have to color pretty much everything else. And what you want to do is because this is blue and your sky is blue, you want to start your cloud up onto the, um, the balloon enough so that you can do your blue stripe, maybe even a little of your purple stripe against white instead of against the blue. You'll sort of see what happens. So start somewhere around here and maybe make a wiggly line like this and a wiggly line over here. This one has um, a little bite taken out. I might, I might take out even more of the sky. So say I go kind of like this and I come up and then maybe another bite out over here. Okay. The tricky thing is to remember is don't color your clouds in. If you do, just make a cloud again someplace else. Don't worry about it. But because ev everybody does, there's always somebody that does it. It just seems it's a natural thing to do is to color in the shapes. So I'm going to color in here here and here. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you down here on the, um, on the black and white one what to do. So same idea, you're going to come out of the side of your balloon somewhere here, maybe here, and um, maybe a nice bite along the top. So I'm going to color in black here and I'm going to color in black here. Okay, that's all we're doing for now. I'll do this part first. All right, and I mean, it's weird to make the sky, a blue sky black, you think it's going to look like night, but that's how you make the clouds look white. If the whole sky is white and you just outline your cloud in black, it doesn't really make it look like it's sunny, but this will actually make it seem like a blue sky day. Okay? Even if you're doing it with pencil, it will be a good idea to try it. Okay? I, it's a beautiful day here in Maine. Um, I was just outside um, raking and getting my wheelbarrow and moving wood around because we heat with a wood stove here. Oh, I did something wrong. Oh, well. No big deal. Okay. And uh, that's what I'm going to do when I'm done. Get some exercise, fresh air. I'm very lucky to live in a spot where there's really not much for neighbors close by, so I can be outside. And I even got my dog to hang out for a little while with me, which is unusual. Okay. So far, so good. Ruby, are we good? Alex, are you ready? Is Alex for the re ready for the next part? Okay. If Alex is ready, then I'm ready. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, we want to put in the horizon line right here. So give yourself, we still have to add the basket on to the bottom of your balloon. So don't run that line like right here because then you're going to have those two things overlapping and it's just not worth the hassle. So give yourself a nice chunk of space here and I'm just going to keep the this blue for a minute and I will do it right about here okay and I'm gonna do the same thing down here okay um when we go to make the mountain and we go to make the trees the smaller you make them the further away it's gonna look because we know how big trees are and so when we see little teeny tiny trees out there, we don't think, oh, those are little bushes. We think those are trees, but they must be really far away. Same thing with the, the, the mountain. Um, so the smaller you can make it, the more of an illusion of space in your picture you're going to get. Okay? I'm going to go to a green next for these trees. I'm going to do the mountains afterwards. I can't remember why, but that's what I did earlier, and that's why. Um, I've got a nice kind of a forest green here. That's what I'm going to use. And one thing you can do is you can start with sort of a small little bump and then kind of make these bumps get a little bit bigger as they go to the side. And that sort of makes it seem like the trees maybe surround this field and they're starting to come towards us if you want to. Okay. And um, then I'm going to color this in. 
if the, the darkest place I want to get it is right on that blue line. The rest of it, I could color it a little lighter. I might add a little highlight with some yellow later on. Okay. It's fun to be able to use a real variety of colors. We've been doing a lot of brown things, I guess. Okay, so that's that. Let me do that with the black and white. Let's see. I'm going to start with a little bump and then we'll go bigger. If I color it mostly just at the base, maybe around some wiggles, I can blend that in with one finger. Not your whole hand, not two hands. I see a lot of kids covered in charcoal when we do charcoal. It's usually um, the adults that don't like to get all dirty, some more than others. Okay, there's our little bit of, of um, trees. Okay, so we'll go to the, the mountain here. And I have a nice, um, uh, well, I don't know what to call this, colonial blue or something, but it's, it's kind of dark and it's just a little tiny bit. Oh, hey, look at, I can see, uh, I can see Alex and Ruby down in Biddeford, Maine joining along. Super fun. And I know that Helena is out there in something by St. Leonard's by the Sea in England. Um, maybe my friends, uh, Blaze and Jalen and Dana out in Wisconsin, their family. So, you know, send me a little message and let me know where you are and, uh, we'll say hi. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use this color. That's pretty close to what I've got there, but something darker, but don't go too dark because as things go off into the atmosphere, um, all the stuff in the sky and in the air kind of makes the colors a little lighter. So it's a very tricky to get something that seems a little bit darker, but at the same time is not too dark. Okay. Cause the dark things tend to want to come forward. So I've got a little peak. I will, I'm going to put that peak right straight under my, um, uh, balloon just for design purposes. I'm going to put the peak right here. And again, I don't want to get too big. All right. So I'm going to make a little peak like this. Maybe I want to roll it a little bit like that. Okay. You can make it rounded, you can make it pointy, you can make it snow-capped, whatever is your thing. Just kind of on the small side. And I'm gonna get nice and, you know, defined right there on that blue line, okay? And, and we're just lining these this on the horizon line right up together because that's how it sort of works. So same thing here, I'm gonna start with kind of a wide V, maybe go up and down a little bit. And I'll, and I'll color at the base and kind of blend that up a little. If you've got a charcoal or a pencil, you want to get a hold of some kind of an eraser. You can use the kneaded eraser, which um, looks like this. When you buy it, it looks like this or maybe bigger. And then when you're using it, which it looks like a big wad of gray clay, but I don't know where I put mine. Or you can just use, you know, regular arts and crafts eraser. So I might take that and I might take it and kind of soft, soften this mountain back here so it doesn't have a big dark line on the top. Right? It changes, sort. I mean, this is just cardstock paper. Um, but it changes the surface of the paper a little bit too, and it um, makes it behave a little bit differently. But that helps to make this look farther away than this. Okay, if I have to, I can make this a little bit darker and little point, you know, little bumps to it or something like that to bring it forward. Oh yeah, that looks good. If you want to put a little like fir tree poking up, you put a little line, and then you make little V's kind of off of that. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm gonna have to get this going. Okay, that's good. Okay, the e next part, very, very easy. I'm gonna use yellow to start with. Um, I've got a nice, bright, warm yellow. And you think that yellow is always warm? I don't know if you can see the difference with them, but this one is a lighter one. It's a little, has a little more white in it. And then this one is is the warmer yellow. Um, I'm gonna use this one. 
All, most of the colors in this picture are warm. Even if, you know, it's a blue. This is a warmer blue than, um, say, like navy blue. Or even, well, that's pretty warm, too. They're just leaning a little more to the greener side of things than to the purpler side of things. So um, we're going hot today, okay? So we have a little sliver of yellow right here. All right, so you can just draw that along there. Again, if you don't have a lot of, you know, foreground left, you know, just do this and then add a little extra color to your clouds or you get a second coat on your sky while you're waiting if you run out of... Well, go ahead and color your balloon. It's not going to be that complicated, right? I got a little plan if you do wait, though, to help you out. Okay, so I've got a nice yellow bit there. Um... And then down here, so I want to be lighter in my black and white. I want this area to be lighter. So I'm just going to draw a line across. I don't want it quite as light as my cloud, but I'm just going to softly smudge that. Because that's the trick with drawing in black and white, is that you have to imagine that the picture was, um, which some, I have done a couple of times, that the picture is um, like a black and white photograph, like something you'd see in the newspaper. And you, you know, everything is not black, black, and white. That's called high contrast. There's lots of grays in between. You have to figure out what needs to be what shade of gray, gray and what's gonna be, you know, another shade of gray. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to the green that I'm going to use for this middle piece, which actually, it looks like it's gonna be this color, but it doesn't actually come out that color, but. Um, and it has, just to break things up, it's, it's at a, you know, in a triangle shape. Okay, so I'll start here. I'll make myself a little spot here. And this actually goes off to the side of your paper. You can, because these are the same size, you can use them to go by. So I'll mark over here, and then I'm going to connect. And I have a nice little sliver in here. I'm going to color this in. All right. Um, so down with my black and white, I'm going to make this, you know, the same thing. I'll mark here, and I'll mark here, and I'll just try to connect those two things. And I'm going to try to color this in. One of the things, you know, you learn to try to be able to color dark and to be color, to use, you know, less muscle and color a little bit lighter. Those are your two, those are two options. But you definitely want to have an eraser. That is the trick. And, and people don't know that you can erase charcoal, but I didn't know. And, um, you know, everybody hates it because they get it all over themselves and they can't erase it, but they actually can. And you don't have to get it all over yourself. You can use a cloth or you can use, um, that looks pretty good. Let me see. I could take this again, too. You can use a cloth to rub it with. You could use your eraser to rub it in instead of um, your finger. You can use the little paper stubs. I've shown these before too. Looks kind of like this, but you can get them bigger and smaller. Um, those are great when you're doing a face or something where you need to, you know, blend the pupil in and it's tiny or something. Okay. All right. So this part down here, um, I'm just going to have to get a little... Maybe a little black from up in a darker spot. If I add a little bit more here to the sky, I get that on my fingers and use that. So we can keep this, you know, this is still lighter than this, but they're very close. If you squint your eyes at this picture, you'll see that this is light and then you'll have this little, you know, shape of dark and then you shot a dark shape up here. Okay? So get your yellow, um, you know, yellow down here. If you want to use it, this is a little bit browner. If you want to use an ochre yellow or or orange or another shade of green, you know, you can, you can ma or make it purple and it will look like a field of purple flowers, right? It'd be a little tricky to add purple afterwards because purple and yellow are opposites. They're contrasting. Um, now I can't think of the word. Um, they're opposites, so that when you mix them together, they actually get a little bit brownish. But if you wanted to add red flowers down here, red on top of the yellow, will, will work great. So would pink or something like that. 
Maybe I'll do that if I think of it, if I remember. But let's go on and, um, and get, the, get the balloon pulled together. We're moving right along just great. Complimentary, yeah. What was I thinking? Contrasting? Complimentary. Wow, I'm so impressed. Somebody's listening. Somebody's learning. Okay, maybe while I'm at it, while I have my yellow. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a little yellow on my um, trees here. We're just figuring the sun is up. But you know what? I used to live at a place in Pownall, Maine, where they used to do hot air balloon rides. And they don't do them in the middle of the day because I think the wind is too strong, so they usually do it in early in the morning or um, in the evening, in the summertime. And it is a gorgeous sight to watch a balloon float up into the sky when you're just, you know, 100 feet from it. And the color of the, and I have, remember early in the morning when it was really gray out and they have, a, it's kind of sideways while they put in the hot air and the color of the flame as it push it, heats the air to go in there is and against the gray sky and then the colorful balloon is really, really an amazing, stunning thing. So if you get a chance sometime, see some hot air balloons. Okay, let's do it. Um, let's go here. So instead, I clean your yellow off or whatever color. If you're going to use a light color, even if it's not yellow, if you want to use light pink or something, make sure it's clean. And we're actually going to start with that stripe. That way um, it won't get mixed up with the other colors, okay? And it doesn't have to be like this. Do whatever you want. Um, the one thing about a few stripes is sometimes they go up and down. Um, that looks great. Um, but if you do polka dots and things, just kind of keep in mind that they're everywhere and that maybe some of them, you know, get cut off on the edges. They're not just a few of them in the middle. But, you know, do whatever you want. It's your thing. It's your picture. I'm going to start like this, kind of near the top. And what I'm going to do is make a big wide V like this. Okay? And then I'm going to go make another one, go down on both sides. I'm going to work on both sides at the same time to help it come out symmetrical. All right, and then I'm going to go up a little bit more, maybe even a little lower because this would actually kind of curve if I don't go quite as tall with that piece. And then I'm just going to go off the edge. All right. Okay, so then I will decide how thick I want. And I want a pretty decent sized yellow piece just because it's bright and we don't want to get too dark with these other colors. So I'll start below it, you know, like right here and go up like that, okay, and then down and up. And I'm leaving that little space that's white and that's gonna be where I'm gonna color that in. Okay, I think that looks okay. So I'm gonna color that in yellow. All right. And it doesn't seem to, you know, I'm only getting very close to the blue over here, so I'm not having any trouble with that blending in. If you're painting, Pro, that's one of the things when I do this as a painting, we do the sky, you know, in the beginning. And by the time you're getting to this, oh, well, that's probably why I planned it that way. I don't know. Is that um, the blue's dry, so you don't have to worry about it anyway. So if you're painting, you should still be okay. All right, I'm going to, I'm not sure that I'm going to fit red underneath. So I'm going to do a purple and a blue one. I have a nice... Um, nice purple here so I'm gonna maybe do the same thing I'm gonna find that spot give myself a little space and I'm gonna go up a little bit and down and up and this might look a little bit different because let's see all right because you're getting small a smaller section all right but try to outline everything so you have a nice clean edge to it all all right, you don't want to work with, um, it's hard to work with pastels because they're blunt and, you know, they're not very pointy. This would be a pretty great thing to do with markers as long as you don't leave yourself too much sky that you have to color in. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to use, is this the one? No, I guess not. I'll have to use a different blue. I'm going to use this blue for my blue part. I'm just going to use do the bottom of it here blue. And then I'm just going to do 
Mm, maybe I'll just do red on the top. I don't know. Let's see what happens in the next minute. All right. Just a reminder that everybody should be drinking and Sue, I mean drinking water. Here's a picture that I took whoops, in Maine because that's where I live. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to use red and I'm going to use a purple because that because this is great. I got this great purpley color, so I'm gonna use that. You could vary the size of your little stripes too to make it more interesting. Whatever. I'm really excited to see how everybody's is gonna come out and what the choices are made for the colors. I love that. Um, you can post them um, on my Facebook page. This this video will be sitting there for you to see at any time and to share. And if you um, post your picture in the comments, then you'll, I'll be able to see it and, and share. And please share the, the video if you can with, with people that you think would like a, you know, maybe just some inspiration to get started doing something creative. Definitely, you know, you don't have to think about it. It's kind of like an exercise workout where they're just telling you what to do, you, you know. It's still good. It's nice to be creative and do your own thing, but it doesn't hurt to have a little suggestions and you can follow along and kind of make it your own. Um, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And um, you can also see them on YouTube or if you know somebody that doesn't use Facebook, um, they're on YouTube under um, free drawing lessons by or with Valerie Wallace Fine Arts and there's a playlist if you I don't know if you need to put in playlists but um, if you do then you can get the whole series and that and that way you can kind of see what you might be interested in and just do that all right um, we'll finish this up I'm gonna do a couple of stripes here so with this like I can go pretty dark in the lower section because it's against the white cloud so it's gonna show up pretty well all right All right, like that, and then maybe I'm gonna have a, uh, a lighter one here. You know, I can touch this back up again. Okay. There we go. Um, you know, maybe I'll make a little skinnier stripe. what I'll do is a little piece at the top so let me think how that would go probably like this like that color that in okay so what we are gonna do now is to put the basket on and I wouldn't try to put a person in there because this basket is so little that you really wouldn't see the person very much it would be just a little mark um, but if you want to, you know, go ahead and do it. It's your thing. So, but we do want to aim, I'm going to take a brown and what we do want to try to squeeze it in. So I don't want to get too low. So I'm going to add a little bit of, you know, whatever this is. I don't know what you call it. Probably some fancy hot, hot air balloon name for this, but like, we'll call it where it attaches. Okay. And then I'm going to make the little basket. Very little. All right. There was just something so peaceful and romantic about a hot air balloon. I don't floating around. I love to see it. Um, and I'm going to put some little lines like that. Okay. I think when I've, I've had another one where we do a, a reflection, I mean a shadow on the ground of it, which is kind of cool, but not today. We'll skip it. Um, so same thing here. I'm going to make that a little different. Make my little basket, connect it, and like I said, if you had a person, it would be like this. You know, it would be just a little mark of somebody in there. 
you know, you're not going to see their ears and eyelashes in this far away. Okay, so, so that's really it. Um, the only other thing I was going to say is if you say you wanted to put some flowers, oh, oh, I know what I wanted to do, is to take the brown while I have it. And if I go along, we did this um, with our dinosaur yesterday, but if I want to go right along the bottom and kind of bring this up, this will give us a little foreground, which is a nice thing to have in your um, landscapes. There, you want a foreground, a midground, and a distance, or I don't know what the last one's called, I can't remember. Um, but you could do something like that and that gives you a little texture, maybe even like right along the edge here. Um, and if I wanted some flowers, the thing is, is they're not huge. You know, you're not going to have a great big daisy out there. That's, that would look like it was a daisy from prehistoric times. So you're just having little, little dots maybe if you wanted to make it look like that. And they would kind of be, a lot of times flowers kind of grow in a little cluster. So you could put a little bunch of them here. And then maybe if you had one up a little closer here, you'd they'd be a little bit bigger. I like pink flowers. Um, if they were way on the other side, sometimes you have bluish ones. You know, you might have just a little, a little mark like this. Okay, maybe some here. All right, okay, that's good. I'm all set, I hope you're all set. Thank you for watching. Um, I really am just loving being able to reach out to people, and I love, love, love hearing, hearing that you're <laughs> that you're watching. Um, if you want to make a donation, you can go to ValerieWallaceFineArts.com, and there's the little bars on the up, upper right hand corner. You click those, and you'll have the option of tickets. And you go to a ticket, you'll see a picture of me, and you can um, donate as little as a dollar. And um, I still love it because then. I, um, no, no judgment. I think it's still fantastic. It just lets me know that you're out there watching and then it makes me feel like this is worthwhile. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much.